Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to, we haven't had one of these in Shomri Torah in COVID counts as 20 years. So in 22 years, we haven't had one of uh, uh, meet the author evening, night. And uh, so this is great to be back and to be doing something, a program like this live and in person with food, masks, no masks. It's just great to be together. And especially on a cold, freezing Shabbos, to be here together um, is really, really special with two very special guests. And I'm very excited. I just met Benjamin for the first time, but uh, two very special guests um, here tonight. It's a tremendous cover for our shul. Our basic guest is Rabbi Chaim Jackter and his son, Benjamin Jackter, not yet Rabbi Benjamin. Jackter. What? Not quite. Not quite. Not Spar quite. Sparia is labeled me as rabbi. Okay. Spar okay. I don't think that necessarily counts. Sparia Smitha. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have a discussion. Part of my back, I'm sorry to uh, the people who have behind me. We'll have a discussion and then um, at the end of the discussion, if anyone has any other questions, people can feel free to um, chime in. But first, I just get to know the two of you. If you could share like, a little bit about what you do, what's your day look like, what are your responsibilities? In, in general. Wow, hey, I'm, a, I'm a busy guy, <laughs> Baruch Hashem. So my main, uh, my main, oh, actually, actually, before I start, I just I want to acknowledge my mother-in-law, Hannah Tokayer, who's, uh, who, who's, 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 in, who's on the Zoom. I think my, my daughter, Bracha, is, is on the Zoom. And most important, my son-in-law, Yisrael Mayer, is, uh, is here. Uh, and uh, my wife's not on the Zoom because she's at a she's she's at a ball game, and my son is uh, with uh, with your opponent with Moya and Jada at a game tonight against Yadna. So uh, so they are they they are preoccupied that way. But otherwise, we're all in the family here, and we're and, and a lot of us are together. So so the family is the most important, and then professionally, so TABC is uh, keeps me. That's no, that's primary. And then the shul, and then the based in. I help out with uh, with, with Gittin. Well, in fact, by the way, I named Fairlawn for Gittin. <laughs> uh, does anybody, you know, you, you know, you identify a place by the rivers that it's on. Does anybody take a guess? How would we write a get in, uh, in, in Fairlawn? Yeah. Anybody know? Well, you do write Fairlawn, that's true, but, uh, and two words, the two words. So, you see, they're two separate words. Not, not one, I was, at, you know, for Ksuba also, it's a Lahabla, but it's a, Two separate words. And uh, what rivers? What rivers do we use? Nahar Pasek and, and how do we write the Saddle River? Nahar Saddle River. That's how we, <laughs> that's how we write it. So uh, I could be a whole Tavar Torah on that. And then I help a lot of communities with Ayurvin and uh, all, all over the country or even in Canada a little bit. So we're, uh, we're, all, we're all over the place with uh, Baruch Hashem. So we're busy. Baruch Hashem, we're uh, we're busy, and with Hashem is uh, is helped uh, is helped me write books. I, I put out, uh, believe it or not, these are not all my books. I, I wasn't. <laughs> some of them are not available. My David's Destruction we are is on order. Uh, the Malachim book I have from uh, my Great Matter One and Two. But Baruch Hashem, my eleventh book just came to my house an hour before Shabbos, and you're the first uh, to have it available. Uh, uh, to uh, to have and uh, Bar Hashem, Hashem was, keeps me uh, keeps keeps me very very busy. And now to Binyamin. I'm a lot more simple. I'm uh, I'm in refreshers here in NYU uh, for the third year, and uh, I'm doing computer science as well. The two of you are written books together. Which books have you written together? Yona, Yona, we work together. Is that that uh, he, that Binyamin learned Yona in uh, in TABC with Rabbi Nachbar? It's uh, well, Dovi Nachbar is a big is a big thing. So together, uh, so 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 so, uh, so Binyamin had a lot to say about uh, about Yona, and um, and and then uh, oh, and then the electric shaver book. Oh boy, that was uh, during lockdown during Pesach, right? So what do people do during lockdown during Pesach? So what we did was basically, uh, I, we, we <laughs> Yisrael probably heard a little bit about this, but uh, we drove our family a little bit crazy for about three months. The only thing we talked about was electric shavers. And uh, we think we really finally got to the bottom of this whole topic of electric shavers. 
Uh, we were very, very excited. I mean, right before, uh, I think it was Arab Yon, right? Also an hour before Yontif started, so because we, we received an email from uh, from Philip, Philips Norelco, where they sent us these up-to-date videos. We were able to see exactly how uh, how electric shavers work, exactly how they work. Slow motion, slow motion videos, especially special cameras to be able to show you how exactly how they work. Eliminates all of the uh, the mystery halach, the halach mystery solving uh, surrounding uh, electric shavers. And uh, you know what our conclusion is about electric shavers? So you want people to buy the book? Yeah, I want to buy the book. Well. They're all mutter. If you want to know why they're all mutter, <laughs> anyone tells you you have to remove the uh, the lift and shave, the lift and cut, don't believe them. If you want to see why, that's uh, <laughs> that's our. What's that process been like? I, I personally have a hard time working with my father. He's in a different you know air for you of uh, of work than I am, obviously, but professionally. But how does that how does that process work with the two of you? Well, he's smarter than I am, so that's uh, that makes it easy. So. Uh, it depends yeah. on the book. So the first book was done when I was in yeshiva. So yeshiva Shalvin. Shalvin. Okay. So it, in my this was in my first year in yeshiva. No. Yeah. So my first year of yeshiva, uh, my father had sorry. Yeah. So my so this was uh, my first year of yeshiva was when we did the first sefer on uh, sefer Yona. And so there, so the way it was done was my father would first give a shear, and then he would write up the shear and all the students' comments. And I essentially went every paragraph saying, "Oh, this makes sense because we have this source that had said also similar to this, or this comment that the student make doesn't really work because we have a Gemara or whatever that says no." So, and I basically I went piece by piece. So I said, nah, "I don't like this whole entire piece. I have my own idea that actually solves the problem that we were trying to bring up on this chapter." So I went piece by piece by piece. And so then, and what, what we learned from this was, it's very hard to have two different voices in the same book. So essentially we left it that Rabbi Jack would have his voice throughout the, the entire piece, but it's very clear which parts are added points by me. It'll either say like Rabbi Yaman Jacker says, or it'll be another, a secondary approach by Yaman Jacker. Um, and the editor also has like, uh, the editor, um, uh, Ari Krishna. Ari Krishna was for that safer. So he so we also it, so he also added pieces in there as well. And so like that's how the first safer went. The second one was a lot was a, was more was more different in that I enjoy physics and engineering. So I spend most of the time with the, all the engineering pieces. So talking to the engineers from Bills and Rocco, going through their the PowerPoint they sent us, going through all the videos, being able to present it to other abundant. We weren't allowed to to send out the uh, videos, so we can't just send it to uh, Revolve. How do you get permission from Norelco to get these videos? I still videos? don't understand. It was a, it, it's totally a fluke. I have no idea. It is. We yeah, have it's protexia. It's protexia. We they, see. See, I help protexia. You have the protexia. I have for Philip Norelco is like this. So it's interesting. Binyamin was insistent. Binyamin was persistent and insistent that we should be able to get good, accurate information. And he said, we, 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 we're, we're like, we're like blind, the, the blind trying to, uh, searching around in the middle of the night. There's, there's no idea where he's going. And he said, we need good information. We need good information. He insisted, you've got to reach the top engineers in Phillips and Ralph. How am I going to do that? He said, just do it. So I said, okay. So what you try always do, you try to network and network and network until I realized, I thought, I remembered, ah, I, one of the rabbis that I helped, one of the communities I helped with Erev is, uh, is the University of, of Champaign-Urbana. Go find the line on. And, and, uh, they, uh, and the, and the Rebbitson from the JLIC couple, her father is the Gunladar in, in, metal, in railroad safety. So he's one of the world's leading experts in metal, and, and he uh, and he's he's like Rav Moshe Feinstein in in, in in for railroad for railroad safety. So his work, so so he has a very very big name in, in, in anything to do with metal. So he made the introduction to us to Philip Snorelko, and that's uh, and and he vouched for us that we are uh, that you can rely on us. So that was. Uh, <laughs> That's how we got that. That was a protexia. That was a, but if you know what, I think the lesson here is if you really want it, and if you really, really want it, and you just will not take 
uh, second class for for a uh, for an answer, and you push, you push, you push, and you, you got it. You finally got it. Oh. It's amazing how like how these <clears throat> two of you can work together so well. How you you wrote three books over the past year, correct? Daniel, shaving, and most recently with Sardi and Ashkenazi Halakha. Those are pretty disconnected. Like you can't find, I'm sure you can. If we figured out a theme between shaving, we, we could be we guitarshing it out. But um, how did, where do you get your ideas from and, and thoughts about like, you know, books or articles, writing? So, so mostly it's the shiurim that I give at TABC and at, our, at, at the shul, I'm the rabbi at the Sephardic Congregation of Tina. I think I didn't even put that on my biography. I can't believe it at the beginning. So I the, I've had the privilege since 2000, believe it or not, I am Ashkenazic. I'm a descendant of the Rama, right? We're descendants of the Rama, and as Hashem's, uh, Ash, Ash, so Hashem's, uh, you know, the Rama, or Moshe Israelis, the number one halakhic authority for Ashkenaz. And yet, and yet, in Hashem's sense of humor, uh, I become the uh, in 2000. I've been since the year 2000, basically, I've been the rabbi of the Sephardic congregation of Tina. And that's uh, learn every single time I walk in there is a, is a learning experience. You're always learning. There's always learning more. It's funny, this morning, I just, I just learned something I realized is I didn't pick it up. That the proper thing, the Sephardim, is based on a Rosh in this Pasha, when you say, Mikdash, Hashem Karnu Yadecha, should be a slight pause between Mikdash and Hashem Karnu, you definitely know that. Uh, Amy definitely knows that. Mikdash, Hashem Karnu Yadecha, the Sephardic Siddur tells you, you know, Mavsik based on the Rashi. Uh, that's why it's Zakev Kadal, right? And uh, but there's just so much, it's just so much to learn. And basically, the Bridging Tradition books are Shiurim that I gave at Share Ora. Um, Gray Ma uh, walking um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Daniel book are Shiurim that I gave at TABC. Um, the, uh, the other book, uh, and, and the, the other books, this, my life is filled with Arabs, so we write up, uh, but uh, a lot of well, a lot of the Arab adventures. That's uh, that's what that's what's all that's what it's all about. Is rejected? Were you always writing in your life? Is this like something new you picked up when you started teaching? So okay, so it's it, right. So when I came to TABC, they put a responsibility on me that I had to write once a week for Paul Torah. And we've been going uh, once a week for the last 27 years. And um, one of the things, well, actually even before that, I started writing a little bit for the Journal of the Law Contemporary Society. I wrote a number of articles from 1989 to 1995. But once in TBC, when I had to write a halakhic article every week, that was quite a lot. And then the Jewish Link asked me to write articles. So, uh, so, I, have, so, then, so I have to put out Kotar every week. I have to put out Jewish link every week. So uh, now it's interesting. You know, parents have a big influence on children. Parents uh, have, uh, my mother said to me once that I will write books. And my father said to me once, you have a new idea, write it down. So I guess that my parents already got this into my head to, uh, that I should go and uh, do this. What's that process look like? For me, writing is, uh... It's very overwhelming. And if you constantly write two articles at least a week, and clearly you're involved in editing and that whole process, how are you keeping track of, of this writing? Is it the day you're writing? Do you, are you just writing always? Is, how do you? So I, I, I find it very relaxing. Yeah. I find that it's, it's, my, it's, my, it's my relaxation. My wife yeah. said, my wife compared me like, a, like an artist. That he has, you know, it's it's it, that it's in me that you feel like you have to get it out. So the, you know, it's described, uh, you know, in my, a lot of the Nevi'im describe their nevu as masa. You know, it's a weight. It's almost like a weight. It's almost a burden that they have to uh, they have to express themselves. And you don't express yourself. It's 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 a it's a little bit uh, it, it, it's painful almost not to express yourself. So I just sort of like feel this this deep weight. Of, of, of this need to express myself, you know, to express the Torah thoughts that I have. I very much want, I very, I very much um, feel uh, the pressure. I almost feel, I hope I don't upset anybody with saying this, I almost feel like, like a woman who is in labor. I, I have to, I have to, <laughs> and there's a baby that needs to be delivered. So, uh, these, these, Baruch Hashem, these are the, 
these are the babies that I've, uh, well, my wife delivered uh, this one, but, uh, you know, but, uh, but these, you know, I, Baruch Hashem, Hashem uh, helped me, uh, help me deliver them. It's like a uh, eternality, so like the, the Vinicius to put it into the prince. That's, that's right. That's why I figured, you know, the grandchildren should be, <laughs> we should be able to, the grandchildren, the my, my, my one book that I'm very excited about is the, uh, the Amuna book. So I, have one, I have a book here about, uh, it's called Reason to Believe. So to me, that was also, uh, I, I, you know, I could say amongst friends, what happened was, was uh, one of our students uh, posed uh, when he was in Israel, he had all these questions, and he posed like a, a 15, pa 15 pages of questions. And, uh, I, I, and, I, and, I, and uh, I didn't have answers. So this was in 2007. And I said, that's not good. So uh, that, that's, you know, and, and, and I started looking around for answers. Like, oh, what's going on? So basically what I try to do is I try to find a place where there's a dirt. You know, where they're, like they say in a business, I think to make a business work, you have to look where the holes are and you have to fill the holes. So that's what I try to, uh, that's what I try to do over here. Is I try to find where there's, a, where, there's a, where there's a gap and I try to fill the gap. So uh, how many, how many Svarim are there in English on Daniel? So that's, you know, that's why, that's we put out the safer on Daniel. Um, English, English halakha. See, my English halakha is different a little bit than the than your typical English halakha book. They does it sort of tell you what to do. I try to explain why, it's, it's, and not just to give instructions, but to give a but 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 to to, 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 to explain how we arrive at the conclusions that we arrive at already from the Gemara, from the Tanakh, even sometimes all the way to contemporary society and all the svarim. I very much am interested what's happening on the ground now. I don't want to just say in, in, in theory. I want to share, well, what's going on the ground now? What, is, what, 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 are, we, what are we doing in actuality? Because, you know, we're Shul Rabbani. So we're not theoreticians that are sitting in the yeshiva in a base medrash. You know, we're, uh, you know, I mean, theory is the most important. Theory of the Mises of Rav Salvech would emphasize that theory is the most important. We, we, this week's parish, we have the mitzvahs of Mara. And before we observe Shabbos, we were learning about Shabbos. So the theory is the most important. But, you know, being a rabbi is school, so it's, it's a, 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 a teaching, you know, with the boys. You know, it's uh, he, the reality, the reality. Where, you know, that's, uh, so I always want to always wanna bring to life in the halacha books what's, what's, what's uh, you know, what's, what's reality. Well, in your Irvin book, which I don't have, but I, we discussed some of the chapters, the, um, like, they're labeled based on the uh, Oakland, the era of controversy, or the I was recently in, in Camp La Vie. I was the sort of the rabbi there for the first half of the summer. We had a shayla. I don't, I don't know if you remember. They were trying. We need to extend the era um, because kids were, you know, to the closer to the beginning of the camp, and it was a complex shayla of pitikra yoyim oh, yeah. so um whether this big dodgeball stadium could count as a pitikra. So the way you, you were referencing, I don't know if it, like, it just comes so naturally, it was like, it wasn't like you're discussing the Rishonim and the, and the Gemaras, but it was like, oh no, this is similar to this chapter of the book, which connects to yeah, whatever yeah. case in Chicago or wherever. Yeah, no, this was in Camp Ramad Darom in, uh, in, 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 oh, in, uh, right. in Georgia, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, you, you have like a, a tremendous, um, you know, clarity in, in the way that you present um, the halacha, which is tremendous. We try, and we try to re connect it to reality. Which, and that's yeah. hopefully, which hopefully, our, our, we try very much to, to yeah. make it interesting, to make it something that's, you know, we, we want to grab your attention. Look, yeah. bottom line, this, what, uh, I teach in TABC. So, you know, to be into, to, you know, the high school boys, you know, you, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to keep interest. We have to sustain interest. And uh, in the shul too, people are tired on shop. So, you know, I have a captive audience and you have to sustain interest. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we're interested. We keep it interesting. Was your, you know, was your idea for the, um, the shaver book? Yeah. That was your... So it was actually, so I'm a barber. In, You're a barber. And I started in Shalvim and then <laughs> continue now in Tawaiya. Wait, I'm just curious, how do you start as a barber? Because who is, your, who is patient zero that's coming to you? A guy in yeshiva walked into my dorm and said, 
I trust you. You look like a guy who knows how to get work. Okay. So we owe it to that guy. Okay. Yeah. I see him every once in a while in life. It's yeah. Great. Um, so, so I'm a barber. Yeah. And so I have, um, so I, so I had like hands-on experience. Ladder, ladder. So I'm a bar, I'm a barber in, uh, oh, check. yeah, great. Okay. Great. Better. Um, so oh, I didn't say the most important thing, but Binyamin is more a honey student. Yes. So, From 16 is, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm a barber. And so I already had a hands on questions. I'd already asked um, when Shachar was visiting Shalvin. So I had first asked him some questions on specific ideas. Um, and then once you start going in, I, so then uh, COVID came and we're sitting in the house and we're doing pretty much, we're doing pretty much nothing in the house over COVID. And Pesach's coming now. Okay, well, everyone's doing trips. Oh, no, no one's doing trips. Okay, so now what are we going to do? So we, so we decided and we, we had three day Yantif. We had three day Yantif, you remember. Right. So, so we started with the Gemara Makov. And then we just started going on from there. And then it goes farther and farther and farther. There's more and more Mephorshim. At some point, we got really stuck on Rafi Pesach Frank for like solid five hours. I like, we just had to figure out why he was saying what he was saying. And compared to a letter that happened to be sent at the, around the same time by what was it again? The, the Falcas Yaakov. And it was like, why did he say this against the letter? It was like, what does that even mean? It was like the whole thing back well, and forth. I think we figured it out. We, and figured we, it out. We, it, we came to a conclusion. And it all works out. It all, it all made sense. But so that, that whole back and forth, and then it expanded and it kept on expanding. So then, so to start off, we were going to just talk about, about haircutting. And then it became, well, once you're talking about Pesach Rosh, it has to also be Pesach Zaki. Oh, so now it expands now into it's also talking about shaving. Oh, well, now we're talking about shaving. What kind of shaver is going to be? So they the, the kept expanding. We're originally going to make it a little, a little tiny country. So now it's like a solid, uh, almost 200 pages. It's, um, and so, and like this, this starting idea just it keeps going and going and going. It's really, really good. What's amazing is, didn't there are Ma write a safer during a pandemic? Am I correct? Oh, did he write a tshuva or something? Uh, I think one of his. You'll forgive me. I, okay. I, he's my okay. grandfather, but I should know. My great great, yeah. <laughs> eighteen generations. I should know that. But to take a very challenging time in your life and then to translate that into a sefer or just sarim is uh, is amazing. To make that make that into a bracha is tremendous. We tried very much when I was when as soon as, as soon as the lockdown. I said, you know what. We have to continue. We have to. I remember the. the I remember. I don't know. You probably had the same uh, thought. But the, as soon as the the, uh, the lockdown of the shul was uh, was announced, I said, "Okay, now now's time to step up. Now's your moment. You had to step up for the shul. You had to be there for the shul. You had to be there for the for the students. And uh, I hope I didn't let, let the students down. I don't remember maybe Ms. Rabbi Strassman, who I, I have the pl I have pleasure I gave smicha to. Uh, Rav Strassman, he's a guidance counselor, so he could tell us that we had succeeded, but I think we were emphatic, we were emphasis, we are not going to let the students down, we're going to give them even higher quality uh, you know, than we were doing before, and we tried as very much, you know, it was, it was I think it was really driven, the, the, pan, the pandemic really drove me to, uh, to try to keep up the excellence as much as, as, much as I can. I'm, I'm curious, like, being writing and getting your name out there doesn't go without any controversy. I'm curious if there's any been, any, ever been any controversy okay. related to any of your articles. Okay, or... so 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 like this. The first of so a couple of interesting things. What gets Jewish people very very excited? Okay, so it's interesting out there. You know, in 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 in, in, in America, you know, in, in, in a broader society. They get very, very excited about abortion, or I guess, you know, about uh, about taxes. You name a whole, whatever, that, different issues, you know, defense and missile defense. And, uh, you know, this is what excites the what's the, what, what gets a Jewish audience excited? So I'll give you an example. I have, we have podcast, you know, these, uh, we to a TBC alumni and to the shower and to our shul, we have, uh, we have a daily WhatsApp. And, I, and on Thursday, I made a, a WhatsApp on the bracha on chicken chow mein. Now, I, 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 I started a whole discussion what to do if, if you have chicken chow mein without noodles. And Benjamin says that's not chow mein. Okay, whatever. But, but uh, yeah, you have, you have a mixture of chicken and, uh, and, uh, and vegetables. My, a, well, forget about no, no noodles. But let's say you have, you have chicken and vegetables. The majority vegetables, but a significant amount of chicken. Which is the, which? Do you make the bracha? They're all mixed together. Make the chicken 
or the other vegetables. So whatever you say about this, Halakha Pedi, which is an excellent source, uh, they said, no, you go by the majority. I said, no, you don't go by the majority. Chicken is the most, chicken is the most, is, is the most important, right? So you're always fasting with these, right? And uh, so you know, chicken chocolate, chicken chowmin, that's it, chocolate, it's a chocolate. So anyway, you should know, I, I, I gave it, I, I, I never had such a reaction like that. I have emails and I have all kinds of people calling calls and phone calls. That's what gets us, you know, the brach on chicken chow mein. That's what really, uh, that's, what, that's what excites the Jew. <laughs> that's the exciting moment for the Jew. That's the your Jewish biggest audience. controversy then, Tavo la brach. That's amazing. Yeah, I tell you. But, I, but yeah. I, one thing, my wife maintains very strict control over the articles that I write. So I have certain, I, I like article, you know, if it's gonna be controversial, uh, the Rebison is gonna say, mm, you know, it's gonna put the kibosh on it. Uh, once in a while, I'll let something go without telling her, but you know, but <laughs> I, I live to regret doing that. Uh, it's <laughs> never a good idea. Now she won't let me write anything that's uh, controversial. So if it's on like on a third rail, you know, political kind of an issue, uh, you know, then uh, she won't. She won't let me. Uh, she won't let me write on it. She wants me to stick to topics like a brach on crispix. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> things like things like that. That's you know. That's what she wants me to. That's what she wants me to write on. But but I rip it. She's right because see, I, I, as a masader get the word the, or the the t being a masader get uh, controversy doesn't work well. Then it doesn't mix very well with it. So I try not to be uh, not to be very controversial. I thought the electric shaver book would be more much more controversial than it is. I thought that would stir controversy, especially because I'm starting up with people I you know very prominent people like Rabbi David Feinstein would say lift and cuts are absolutely awesome. Uh, Rabbi Heinemann has his whole uh, mahalach about what certain what shavers are allowed and what are not. Did you present it to Rabbi Heinemann? I gave it to him as a gift, but uh, so and I, I yeah, emailed. Yeah, just just as we were publishing, Rav Heinemann uh, became sick, so we weren't able to. We were going I became, to. He, I don't mean became sick. I think he was to be hearing. Was, he? what, what, it was something that we were, we were going to get in contact with him, but like it, some issues. We've been trying and trying and trying, but anyway, I thought we were arguing with Rav David Feinstein, Rav Heinemann, and we're saying things are mutter. I figured people would get all upset. So far, not. So far, not Rabbi Rabbi, <laughs> Rabbi Ari Leibowitz on his, you know, every once in a while hosts uh, the the uh, the podcast. What's that podcast called? What's that headlines? Called? Headlines. And uh, he wanted to he wanted to interview me about uh, and both of us about the uh, about the electric shavers. And he said, "Are you willing to debate somebody?" I said, "Great, yeah, debate. I love a debate." So, uh, so even though I'm terrible at debating, but he's great at debate. So I, I, I pity anyone that debates with Binyamin. But uh, they uh, and uh, they, but he he could. I said, "Great." He couldn't find anyone that was willing to debate us about about this topic. I said, "Okay." But uh, I thought it would be very controversial. That's that's the only thing that hasn't been too controversial, which is, which I find very very interesting. I find that very very interesting. What is up next? Okay, we have a couple more. We have, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> we have a couple more in the pipeline. Uh, we have two two that are already completed that are being edited. So uh, there's a book on Hashmal, very important on electricity and the 20, 21st centuries. Ring, Alexa, uh, that's, uh, you know, very, woo, that's a, that's a, you name, you name all these uh, security cameras and, uh, and electronic card keys, you know, name any, name, any, you know, the, these, uh, the motion detectors, you name any, you know, uh, sensor lights, you name it, your, your, your refrigerators, you know, the contemporary refrigerators, you name it, we uh, we pretty much have it in this. Uh, we we pretty much have we pretty much have it down in the uh, in the book. Uh, that's very that's one book that's being worked on. Hopefully that should be out by Pesach. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what Hashem wants. And then Rus, uh, we want it out for sure. So hopefully that's a, as another person is editing. A nice nice woman in in, in Yushalayim is editing. A nice Rav is is editing the Kashmal book in uh, the electricity book in Yushalayim also. And uh, and then and then um, and then and then um, and then we uh, we the two this book we haven't submitted yet for editing, but most of it's written up. It's on Agatha. See, during COVID, uh, what I did was with my family, 
uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, we always, you know, walk back in shul or it's, we sit and talk about agaritas. It's one of the things that we construct, we try to make constructive uh, projects during the lockdown. And so with, with uh, the whole family, we talked about including Yisrael Meir. Yisrael Meir is very, very excellent at, at everything in Torah, but agaritas especially. A lot of thoughts about, uh, about, about agaritas. So we have about 50 agaritas that we're going to try to, 50 stories in the Gemara that we're going to try to analyze. And we have a lot to say, we have a lot to say about that. Some of them, some of those have been printed in the link. And uh, we have a lot, we have a lot to say about that. I, I also happen to take a course on agarita at YU. At YU. It was so, very good. So it really helped me also with the analysis of, very, of these yeah. various agarita stories. So I was able to add more analysis, which made me feel like I could actually have an impactful part of the safe right that that also and also that came out from our summer program we had in our we kid in, in during 2020 our children didn't go to camp so we ran camp jackton and uh my my i i my wife's head counselor but i was in charge of two things i was a sports coach and and, and uh and i was and i was in charge of Chinuch. So one of the things we we sat around we we discussed Agatha. So a lot of the discussions also from Camp Jackter also put together for uh, for I think the kids liked your shear much more than they liked my shear. But uh, okay, you seem to be a bigger hit with your with your siblings than uh, than, than than I than I was. But uh, but Baruch Hashem. So we have a, we have a lot more, and I have to write up Devar. I want to write up a shear on Devarim. And uh, that we're giving this year in TABC. So, uh, yeah. And the Varmi is the hardest safer to teach. Varmi is, is definitely the hardest safer to teach. For sure. For yeah. sure. Absolutely. So, no. Baruch Hashem. The truth is, really, it's, it's mostly I have to thank TABC and I have to thank, you know, and all the other, I mean, you know, and Sharia Ra, but really mostly TABC, because that's, you know, I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure to pre to to present. It has to be compelling, and it has to be uh, and it has to be accurate. If it's not going to be accurate, gonna get, uh, the students are going to roll their eyes. If it's not compelling, they're going to be asleep. So uh, so you know it's very hard to present things that are accurate and are and and are compelling. So that's that's it's a very difficult search. And hopefully we've we've had that search, and hopefully we have it. Uh, you know, I would just want to say just one other one one other thing, just to, an interesting point. One of the students at TABC made a very interesting point. Uh, Elon Agus, you uh, said he made a very interesting point, a very good observation. He said that um, th that that uh, we are witnessing today a, democ a, a democratization of Torah. What does he mean by that? That we are witnessing a democratization of Torah. It's a democratization of Torah, that Torah is being made available to everybody. And that anybody called Dichvin Yesev Yifsach, anybody that wants can come and take. It used to be, uh, it was a closed book. How would you, how would you act, be able to access Torah? It was for an elite. But, but uh, and uh, even when I was, even when I was a kid, you, you know, you, 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 uh, whether the, the, the translations, I remember the first time I looked at it, you know, where we're, I don't want to mention any specific names, but you know, you, you remember this, Amy, when we were kids, you know, the translations you looked at, yeah, we didn't even, you know, you, you, you don't understand what they were saying. You, it didn't really do you any good. It, what, what it was just the translated words you didn't know in Aramaic to words you didn't know in English, so you didn't, didn't, you didn't get anywhere. So, uh, so, so so, but, but, but we are literally, we are in a time when Torah is, is, is available for anybody that wants it, anybody that wants it. All we have to do, you know, the, the, the job is to want it. If you want it, it's there for the taking. You just have to have the desire to seize on it. And once you have the desire to seize on it, then you can uh, you, to be there. So I, I'm very proud to be part of the, that effort to democratize the, uh, the Torah. A lot of my books I posted on on Safari, which is also part of this uh, de democratizing. Yeah. So that's also uh, people ask me, why, uh, what, what, "Why don't you want to sell?" I said, "No, I want to make it available." That's the uh, that's that's a key thing. It's a great spot to end. Uh, thank you, Rabbi Jacker. Thank you, Benjamin, for joining. Thank you for the conversation and your openness and frankness. I really appreciate it. I guess we'll open up to the crowd. If anyone has any questions? Go ahead, Shlomo.
I'll repeat, I'll repeat. Yeah. You mentioned being on the ground as a rabbi plus a theory. So and that's a big conversation, I think, comes with the law, though, whether it's a text based, is it the story based, if you follow practice. What we discuss a little bit, whether we should follow practice. Shlomo's, Shlomo's question was that, I mean, Jackter mentioned that when it comes to being a pulpit rabbi, it's very, um, it's not theory, it's not, it's very practical, it's on the grounds. So, like, when you, I'm going to change a little bit, when you're, the post game you discuss things with and your misora is that like how does that navigate the the decision in the psak halacha on the ground? So, so the Arab book, I'll give you an example. Look at the title of the Arab book. The title of the Arab book is Walking the Line, Hilchot Ervin from the sources to the streets. So you know it's not just the sources, but to the streets. But then see, see, you need to do both. You need to be able to do the sources. But you need to be able to take it to the streets. And then you have to be able to take it from the streets back to the sources. So you, uh, that, that's very, very important. You have to, it, it goes both ways. You know, there's a story about, uh, not a story, but a, a very nice evaluation by Rosh Hashanah Zaman Arbach uh, that was written by Yisrael Rosanna the Tzoman Institute. So he said, Rosh Hashanah Zaman Arbach saw Torah in light of the reality, and he saw the reality in light of the Torah. So uh, when, uh, when I see P. Tinker Yard Vesose, there's a concept in the Allah, in, in Erevin, which means the lip of the, uh, of the, of the roof extends downwards and creates a machis, it creates a halachic wall. So uh, I, I think of, yes, I think of Camp Darom, Camp Ramad Darom in uh, Northern Georgia. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, but, but so I see the Gemara, I think of the camp. When I see the camp, I think of the Gemara. You know, it goes, you have to, it has to be both ways. It has to be both ways. And minna, it has to be doable, it has to be practical. If it's not practical, it can't be Torah, because Torah, by definition, Moshe Rabbeinu tells us, Hashem tells us, it has it has to be doable. If it's not doable, it's then the Torah has to be it has to be doable. If it's not doable, that's why in the, in the forthcoming electricity book, when it try to show that it's doable, and we try to uh, to uh, without comp without compromise, and we have to show how it fits perfectly into the Masora, but it can't be. Uh, it, it's a, it's a very, you, have to, you have to thread the needle, and on one hand, it can't be too lenient. It can't be too lenient that you're uh, you are doing violence to the. Uh, you don't fit into the Masora. You have to fit into the Masora. If you don't fit into the Masora, you're you're not part of the you know you're not you're not part of the Masora. And uh, you know you're not, you're not legitimate. You're not legit. You have no legitimacy if you don't. If you if what you're doing can't fit into uh, to the to the Gemara, to the Rishon, to the Shulchan Aruch. On the other hand, you know you have to be. It has to be doable. The, the people, you know, the committed people have to be uh, able to do it. And if a committed person is not able to do it, uh, you can't you just can't function that way. That uh, it can't be. Uh, that's not Torah by definition. Yes, Mr. Morahani. Yes, like like Mr. Billy Jean King. Yes. Mr. Margaret Thatcher, yes. Yeah, Mr. Honey spoke about the importance of the cow. He spoke about animals and production of the Mendy asked, did you ever think about your personal challenges or opportunities about being a pulpit rabbi and also a high school rabbi? Um, I, my, my, well, okay. Yeah, that's after retirement. That's after I retire, yes. It sounds like the Robinson might get video power. On that one. <laughs> the Robinson wouldn't allow yeah. that one, right? <laughs> what? Yeah. Right, right, right. I also must tell you, I also must say, I try to find, as you see, I try to find niches, niches where uh, nobody else has really uh, has ventured. But you know, there are a lot of you know, we we all have that. So you know, every Rebbe, you know, you know, and, and, and you know, so that I don't think I have a unique. Uh, Voice on that, though I, you know, though I would tell you that uh, I have a lot of good. The one thing I do have with, with Gidden, I have a lot of good stories. I once uh, caused the U.S. State Department to issue a travel advisory, but uh, <laughs> that was a good story. Can you elaborate a little bit? Uh, <laughs> you can't just throw that out there. Yeah, that uh... <laughs> uh, was a good one. All right. Anyway, so there was this fellow who, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was quite, all right. So okay, that, that you know. He, you have to invite me back to this town residence for me to tell the whole story, but whatever, I, hint, hint, whatever. But uh, the, uh, but the story goes like this. So uh, basically like this, the couple came for a get. 
This is very early on in my, and she came with her, this is like this, this, this story, I can't, you can't make this stuff up. And the, but she came with her new boyfriend. That was a good move, huh? You know, and uh, and the new boyfriend was was the you'll forgive me was the was their uh, was their uh, was their was their uh, shul's rabbi. Uh, it was a conservative shul. Okay, and <laughs> yeah, he died of a heart attack a couple of years later. Okay, I, yeah. <laughs> when Hashem says low sin up, he, you know, he he means it. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, but uh, the. Um, the, 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 anyway, so, so the husband got, was a little perturbed, let's put it this way. So it took us about two hours to try to convince him to, uh, to, do, to, um, to, uh, to do the get. Finally, he agreed to do it. But then as we we're about to sit down, then he used Mavatal, he canceled. So, you know, you can understand here, the need to do this get is terrible. It's a terrible big need. And he's now refusing, he's all upset. And he canceled the get, you know, before he, he can't do it. Once it's delivered, he can't cancel, but it wasn't delivered yet. We just started. He canceled it. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, but, uh, but then he was traveling to Israel. Uh -huh. So I wrote to my friends in the Rabbanut, uh, you know, you know, so uh, help me out here. So, you know, the Rabbanut, you know, it's government in Israel. So they took away his passport and, uh, <laughs> When he got to the airport, he wasn't happy. Uh, so he started getting, uh, he got up, he started throwing a fit in Ben Gurion Airport. Now, by the way, how, who here has been in Ben Gurion Airport? You've been there? Is that a good place to throw a fit? No, very bad. Okay, anyways, the guy was arrested before he could say Brooke, you know, before he could say Brooke Robinson. I don't know if anybody knows Brooks Robinson is anyway, but uh, you know, I think. or you could say Brooks Robinson, the, uh, I don't know why I use that example, what else just came to my mind. Uh, he, uh, he, he was immediately, he, he was, uh, that's it, he was arrested. So then he came to the Yerushalayim Beit, you know, and, uh, and <laughs> there's more to this. Anyway, so he uh, so they got the get, they get, he, he was put into jail. They got him out of jail in exchange for a get. I all just there's more to discuss here. Anyway, when he came back and we got the get done, don't the whole discussion. And um, we came back, somehow this got this word got uh, to to um, to the uh, to, to the State Department and they and they issued a, they issued a travel advisor. If you're involved in contentious Jewish divorce, you're advised not to travel to Israel. So I said, ah, I get it. Okay. I said, <laughs> How many TVC Ruben can say they got the they got the uh, the State Department to issue a uh, travel a travel ban? <laughs> uh, the first in TVC to get it. Amazing. Oh, we grew up together. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Abe. Um, did you win in on except for eBay, which is not a problem? I mean, Jack was asked to weigh in on the Arab controversy regarding Ocean Parkway in Brooklyn. We could we could take off the recording. Yeah, but you know, uh, you, you know, you not made an error for our community. Well, you know, you asked me this question. You know the answer. I made an error for the community. Your father never relied on it, by the way. I just for the for the, for the record, but. What's that? He was right. I wouldn't rely on it either. But I just, you know, you make an Arab, make an Arab anywhere. I try not to rely on it. If I have to, I, I do rely on it. But if you need, you don't need to. You don't need to. But the, um, but but you know, look, we're, who I'm not opposed to. It's Rav Shachter. I follow Rav Shachter and Rav Willig. Rav Shachter and Rav Willig call like the Chazanish that you can make it. So that's why I follow. They're my rabbi, and that's why I follow. And that's. You know, that's it. By the way, being the rabbi of the Sephardic congregation of Tinek is the easiest thing in the world. I got to tell you, you're talking about rabbinics. It's the easiest thing in the world to be the, uh, to be, to be the, uh, to, be, to, be, to be the rabbi in, in, in the Sephardic congregation. All I need to know is three things. You know what you need to know? Rav, Ovadja, Yosef. That's it. <laughs> Once you know that, I mean, not really, but you know, you, you read the book, you'll see it's more than that. But that's, in a nutshell, you know, it's uh, Rob Ovadjian. By the way, I just to let you know a little bit. How is I able, how am I able to function as the, as Ashkenazi and to be the rabbi there, right? 
So I remember, I think what I did my first day there, I realized something. My first day that I was there, and somebody asked me a question at, a bar, at the first bar mitzvah, putting on the tefillin, you say, you say tachanun. So I said, okay, it's my first Svartic Shiloh. There we go. So I think, all right, Svartic, follow the Rambam. I'm, I'm thinking, I know the Rambam, Hilchas Tefillah. He gives a list of days which you're excused, when which you don't say Tachanun. That's not on the list. I said, no, of course you have to say, you have to say the Rambam, according to the Rambam, you have to say Tachanun, of course you have to say Tachanun. Little I know, the minute of Svaradim is on the day that the Bar Mitzvah puts on his Tefillah for the first time, on the day it became Bo Bayom at Shacharit. There's no, uh, there's no, you don't, you don't say, Sibur doesn't say, doesn't say Tachanun, because it's like a Chatan, he's like a Chatan, a Chatan, you don't say Tachanun, he says Chatan, 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 So, so what did I realize then? What did I realize then? I realized that, I said to myself, you know nothing. So, uh, so by the way, so once you realize you know nothing, then already you can go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That's the first step. The first step of being the rabbi, of being a successful rabbi of a Sephardic congregation, for an Ashkenaz, be a successful, hopefully a successful rabbi of a Sephardic congregation, is you realize you know nothing. Once you realize you know nothing, you gotta, you have to, you have to learn a lot. You have to, you have to get a rebbe, you have a couple of rebbe and guides, and then you can, you know, then you can. So what I picked up for uh, the last twenty-one years, there it is. You know, it's, uh, at least some of it is there. Is there. There's a lot there. Interesting stuff. One last, uh, well, one last question from uh, Mr. Mar Mr. Marahani. No, so I wanted so so uh Mendy asked, do we find that the, the couples that are coming for get today are different than couples that are coming when Reject originally started? Right. So I will I one thing I can okay, it's hard for me to make an observations. One thing that I'm worried about is, and that this really gets me, is that well, first of all, generally speaking, all, with exceptions, but generally speaking, I'm only gonna get if the if the shul rabbi thinks it's, you know, that's appropriate to do so, that they, you know, so typically, you look, I look at sometimes it's necessary. It's necessary, it's in the Torah. Sometimes it's necessary. Um, that being said, I, I find, I'm, I'm very worried because I started out, I was, there were, uh, mostly I was, I was about 70, 80% of, of the people that were helping were people outside the Orthodox community. Now at this point, it's about, it's the other direction, it's about 20% outside the Orthodox community. Um, it's a sad reality that I think, I, I, you know, in my lifetime, you know, I'm saying in my professional lifetime, and, I, and I'm still hopefully far from retirement. Um, I've seen, uh, I, I've seen a tremendous, tremendous, um, tremendous downgrading in the in the, in the outside of the Orthodox community uh, because the assimilation has really has uh, <coughs> has 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 uh, has, uh, has grown. Uh, the assimilation has uh, has increased, and therefore, the amongst the non-Orthodox Jews who uh, are uh, who, who realize that they need to have a get, it's 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 becoming it's becoming lower. It's it's, it's, it's dwindling. It's 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 the assimilation is uh, is is I, I I see it. The assimilation is is uh, it's un, it's unnerving. It's unnerving. That's 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 a big big problem. That's a big, big problem. Um, and uh, look, we have to be machazek. We have to be machaz. You know, look, I will tell you, the lesson that I, as a masader get that I see it every get. You know, it's very important to love your spouse, you to be a good spouse, and uh, hopefully, you know, my students in TABC, we emphasize the importance. You know, you have to be a good husband. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if I taught girls, I would say be good wives. So I, I, <laughs> what can I say about these? That's you tell. That's you. your job, right? So uh, be a good, you know, be good spouses. It's very important. You know, very, very important. It's the most important thing. Because be a good spouse. You know that you're. Uh, you know. Uh, now the whole family is the, you have a happy spouse and the whole family have a you know, happy happy marriage and children are happy. It's uh, yeah, it's not so easy, but it's you know, but uh, 
So that's Shem's help. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's the most important. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. And I wish you luck in the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.